Welcome back to our new month and to our theme of work and play. I want to say now that you may hear one of my neighbors working or playing, depend on how they, depending on how they see their yard work. So I apologize now for the, the cutting of grass that's happening in my background. In our society, in the society of the United States of America, it seems that we value work. We value busyness. We value getting ahead. We value making sure that we're number one in everything that, that other people see as important, such as our jobs and our positions and who we're employed by and what we're doing in that employment. We hold these things in high regard and we have a million commercials telling us exactly how we could play. My question is, are we really looking to play or are we looking for status? The status of having all of these great tools and instruments of play, yet not actually being able to play. I was looking at the theme of work and play from the working class perspective and from the the perspective of people who are precariously housed and precariously employed and precariously living in a society that may not support who they are. And in a society that deems them unworthy and prepares for them positions that will never pay a living wage. So when I think of the theme of work and play, not only am I struck by how much we all work, I'm struck by how much we do to prevent ourselves from playing. There has to be a balance there. It seems that we value being in balance. And I think to myself right now, you know, I'm in seminary and you know that um, I've been working to learn how to do pastoral care, which puts me in the position where I'm working way too many hours, too many hours for human life to be balanced and too many hours for me to be happy. Yet, I have an idea that what I need, what I want, what will work towards my success is if I can continue to do this so that I can be the pastor that I'd like to be when I get out there and I'm graduated and I'm ordained and fellowshiped. That's the thing about work. Sometimes work is for a higher cause. Sometimes work is so that we can afford to take care of our families. Sometimes work is so that we have a sense of purpose. And sometimes work is just so that we can survive. So I've talked a lot about work. And I want to focus on play. What brings you joy? What makes you happy? What moves your spirit? What's bringing laughter? What soothes you? Do you find those things all to be play? Or could some of those be bound up in what you do in work? My wife loves her job. Oh, I've never met someone who is so in love with what they do, with the people that they work with, and with their inner calling. She loves it. And I've been in a position when I'm, I'm working for something that I believe in, yet I have no joy in it. And I want to ask you, is she playing or is she working? I've watched this for years and I still kind of go back and forth with it. I guess she's playfully working. And I wonder if that's something that we all need. Do we need to carve out play in the times that we are working, in the places that we are expected to be a thing, we're expected to be a position, we're expected to fit into this professional mold? Is it that we are living into the, into the expectations of others and denying our own human life? We're denying our own happiness. We're prioritizing what must be done over how we must rest, how we must play, how we must be in community to be healthy and whole. Why are we working so hard and playing in ways that really don't nourish us? I was watching a playground and the way that humans learn to live in community and the children were swinging and swinging 
and swinging in at first. Some of the little kids didn't know how to swing and a parent was standing nearby or I should say an adult was standing nearby and they're like, pump, pump, pump your legs. And then here comes another kid, and pump your legs. I'm sure we've all seen something like this. And eventually the child on the swing believes in themselves enough to know that they can do this motion, this pushing and pulling. And at that moment, as they are pushing and pulling and pumping and believing and working out all of the intricacies of making the swing work, I ask myself, are they working or are they playing? Are they playfully working? What do you think? When you think back on something that brings you such joy, but it wasn't something that you picked up in the moment, were you working or were you playing? And if you can answer that question, what is the criteria for you to determine if it's work or if it's play? Recently, I decided that I needed to do something called self-care. I know it's something, it's a big buzzword around right now, and we hear everything about bath bombs and quiet walks in the park and sleeping and eating and and taking care of our bodies in the way that we know is the best way for us to be alive in the world. And I hear about coloring and making art and all of those things. And I, I do some of those things, some of them very well, and others of them I'm working on. I'm a work in progress. And I still wasn't feeling necessarily relaxed. And in the moment, that I felt like self-care was a misnomer. It's something that I could care less about. I realized that maybe I was looking for a way to playfully work. And so I decided I needed to play an instrument. And growing up, I played percussion and I played brass instruments and I loved them. I loved the, the, the clang and the 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 brassiness that comes through when you're playing a brass instrument. And I love the percussive nature of a percussion instrument. Just the ba da 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 It just, it felt right to me. I felt like I was called back to ancestral times. And because as we grow older, we believe that we should know things already. When I tried to pick up my brass instrument again, my trumpet, I just wasn't that great. Maybe it has something to do with not using that trumpet in at least 25 years. I couldn't find joy. I couldn't find play in the work of learning to play a trumpet. And so recently I was gifted a flute. And, and the flute for me is the mellow to the brass. It's, it's the the tranquility that carries us to places that we had forgotten, to meadows and to games and to, to far away places that we only imagine. And the flute brings me peace. I only can play one note. I'm learning to play on YouTube, so wish me luck. And in that one note, in that learning how to hold the flute, and the unscrewing and the cleaning and the caring for of the flute, I found my place of playful work and I'm happy. I charge each of you to look beyond what you should be doing, to look beyond what you need to do to survive and to find your own place of playful work and be enjoying and be happy, be enjoined with it, be connected, and to know that, yes, we all do need a balance, and sometimes we can't find that. And sometimes let's just dip our balance into the side of play and move back away from work just a little bit for a little while until we are building the intricacies of swinging on that swing, until we are swaying back and forth and being soothed by the prayerful, prayerful, playful work. May it be so, blessed be, Ashe.